Good evening, everybody. It's good to be here tonight. This is a wonderful night and a very special night. Uh, tonight we're celebrating the class of 2023 uh, that have gone through the class called Catechism. Catechism, uh, a lot of people will hear that word and think Catholic, but it has nothing to do with Catholicism at all. The word catechism means to study the word of God by questions and answers. It's one of the most uh, wonderful techniques of studying the word of God, uh, especially when uh, you don't really know too much of what the Bible says. And so you read a question and then the answer comes and it gives you greater understanding of what's being taught. So this class has been a life changing to every one of these graduates tonight. They came to this class one way, but they're leaving a different way. And tonight is the, the capstone of everything that's happened during these nine months. And they have completed their course, and there's nine students tonight uh, that we're gonna honor. Nine months, they've been sitting under the teaching of God's word. They've heard the teachings, but uh, what's so unique about catechism, you just don't hear about it, but you experience. So if we're taught on a topic like divine healing, then we'll pray for divine healing. And they have a hands-on experience. And so tonight, you're gonna to hear the testimonies of a few of the class members, of uh, their experience and what God did for them on their journey in this nine-month class. So it's a privilege and, a, and an honor uh, tonight to present to you the class of 2023. Let's give him another hand. I think a lot of you have gone through catechism and you know how exciting it is, especially graduation time. And uh, it's wonderful to know that uh, what makes this department so great is the staff. And uh, we want to, at this time, acknowledge our staff 
we'd like to acknowledge Ozzy and Joanne Herrera. They, of course, are counselors, and the class has been split up and divided, and uh, half of the class is taught by one set of counselors and the other, and uh, they have grown to know these students in a very wonderful and very close way. Also, we want to introduce Johnny and Lena Ofisa. I'd like to introduce to you Janice Kirk. Mert McMahon. Avia Schmed. And Cheryl Wuerl. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to our worship uh, ministry and leader, Lena Ofisa. Let's stand, shall we, and worship the Lord.
Only in the name of Jesus, there's deliverance. Only in the name of Jesus, there's healing. Only in the name of Jesus can set your people free. Oh, Father God, we say thank you tonight for this offering, Lord. Bless the faithfulness of your people. They brought their offering, oh, Father God, to the storehouse. And we pray your blessing upon it. Multiply to meet your need, oh, Father God. And we thank you. We give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Shout amen, somebody. Amen. amen. Just check it. You may be seated. You may be seated.
pleasure to work with this catechism class this year. These students have worked hard at completing all of their coursework. Each week, they're given a homework on the lesson, which is due the following week. They memorize the books of the Bible, the Ten Commandments, the Lord's Prayer, the Foundation Stones, Great Commission, and the Apostles' Creed. Throughout the class, they have taken eight quizzes. Some of them were pretty hard. <laughs> it's not all work, though. There are skits that they've performed, potlucks and fellowships that the, all of us have enjoyed. They feast on the Word of God each week. The students experience object lessons that explain truths, such as the orange for water baptism and popcorn night for the baptism of fire. The catechism class of 2023 has studied and come to the realization of what they believe. I want them now to recite the Apostles' Creed, which is a statement of what they believe. Class, will you please stand? Will you before this audience and host of family and friends tell us what you believe? State the Apostles' Creed by saying, I believe creator of heaven and in Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, They will now recite Hebrews 6, 1 and 2, which was also a memory work. Foundation Stones. Hebrews 6, 6 1 and 2. Therefore, we being the principles of the They will answer also these three questions. What is the work of the Godhead? The work of the creation is the Father. The work of redemption is the Son. The work of sanctification is the Holy Spirit. What are the areas of temptation that Satan uses? He uses the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of the eye. What was the message that Jesus taught during his ministry? Very well done. We have a few students tonight that are going to uh, share their experience in, in different sacraments of the church and what they encountered on their journey with God. And the, the first one that's going to share tonight uh, is Sarah Garcia. Now, now, Sarah, how did you uh, find this catechism class? I'm a member of this church, and my uh, grandparents have brought me to this church since I was a small child. And so you heard about catechism, and then finally you took it, huh? Yes, I took the long overdue advice. Uh, well, was that good advice? The best advice they could give me ever in my life. Oh, that is awesome. Did you enjoy the class? It was life-changing. I more, more enjoyed it than ever. That's beautiful, life-changing. Well, now, the topic that you're going to talk about this evening is what was your personal experience in water baptism. Every one of these students were water baptized, but, and they all have an experience, but we chose you to represent all of them tonight on what water baptism did for you personally. 
water baptism is a holy act commanded by God's word. Um, it, the, the believer is identifying himself with the death, burial, and resurrection of Lord Jesus Christ. For me, the best part of baptism is found in Ezekiel 36, 26 through 27. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh, and I will put a spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. <clears throat> For me, water baptism um, has always been a very profound experience. Um, as a child here in this church, I took junior catechism, and that is the day that I would say that I knew that God was real. Um, there was something I was praying for, and um, Pastor Mallet, Dr. Mallet, said it straight in her pool in the water. She said exactly my prayer. <clears throat> I stayed in this church as a young child and as it, my youth, and as an adult, I decided to take a different path in life. Um, I have kids, and my son found himself in junior catechism, such as I did. Um, I was not at the best point in my life. I was pretty low on the totem pole there. And the moment he stepped into the water and started getting prophesied, it moved me so much. I felt deliverance from all my iniquities in that instance, in that moment when my son stepped into baptism that day. So the day when I took catechism and I went to get baptized myself, it was a life-changing experience. My heart was now open and ready to receive what God was saying. I've always chose my own path, and in water baptism, it made me realize that God is my only path and the path that I want to be on. <clears throat> He's always carried me through the hardest times and the hardest things in my life, and I've always known that He's always been there in the back of my head, in my heart, in my mind, pulling me to, to God and to come back to church. In water baptism, it just set that feeling in my heart and my soul on fire. Um, he buried all my hurts, all my rejections, all my failures, all my torments. I truly met God in that water that day. He changed my heart and it's like, I'm done, here I am. And that's exactly how I felt and I'm just here for God. I'm here for him to use me. I'm here for him to work in my life. And that's pretty much it. Thank you. Right. Amen. All right, the next one that's going to share tonight is Edsel Patton. Now, Edsel, how did you hear about this class? Through Manny and Evelyn. Oh, Manny and Evelyn, they recommended the class to you? Yeah, they're right there. They are? <laughs> oh, I see them. Yeah, all right. So, uh, what did you think when they recommended for you to come to this class? What did you think? I give it a shot. Give it a shot, right? So, you came? I did last year. Oh, you were here last year? Last year. <laughs> so you came uh, uh, last year with, with them. Yes. And uh, due to your work and circumstances, you weren't able to complete that class. So you decided this year, I'm going to start out and I'm going to make it to the end. Right? Yes. Well, and so we commend you. Let's give him a hand. <laughs> class, Edsel, there's an ordinance called foot washing. And uh, foot washing uh, is certainly in the Bible, and it's an ordinance that Jesus wants us all to participate in. I want to know if you could please at this time share your experience in that ordinance and what it did for your life. I'm going to start with John 13, 14. And since I, the Lord, your teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash others' feet. The foot washing, it taught me to how, how to be humble, humility, and selfless love. There isn't words to explain the experience that I had, but it was a great one. I would encourage anyone that's thinking about this to stick out the nine months and it was worth it. I've heard of foot washing. I've never went through it. And I'm grateful that I've been able to do this. 
in foot washing, the Lord touched you, didn't he? Yeah, he did. I think you went through a whole box of Kleenex. Is that yeah, right? I did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> and the brokenness of, of your spirit and heart, uh, knowing that uh, God was giving you beautiful feet. The Bible says, how beautiful are the feet of them that bring good news. And so, Ansel, you can now bring good news. And you can Thank share you. that with everybody. Thank you for sharing tonight. Tonight we're having uh, Reverend Eddie Iono. He's sharing here for his uh, beloved wife. As you know, Eddie uh, had lost his first life, uh, wife and gone through a hard, difficult time. And God brought someone new into his life. And uh, when I was there for his wedding, I said, Eddie, one thing you must do with your wife is go through catechism together so you're on the same page. And so uh, she had to go to the island, and she was unable to be here tonight. And uh, Eddie did nothing but rave on this class on how it ministered to his wife. And so Eddie is here tonight to represent her and to share with his class uh, what catechism has meant to them as a couple in God. Would you share, Pastor Eddie? God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Uh, we're on live from, uh, from the American Samoans, so it's live now. So, uh, first of all, I want to um, thank God. Everything she told me to, to say tonight, I got everything memorized. That's good. So first and foremost, thank God for, for allowing her to come to catechism. Second Thanksgiving, she told me to tell you personally, she enjoyed your presence, your teaching, your class, and it's a blessing sitting under your leadership as a teacher in catechism. The third Thanksgiving, she told me to give her thanks to his best counselor, best. Mr. Ofiso, and his beautiful wife. Give a big hand for Mr. Ofiso. And then the fourth Thanksgiving is for the graduates from 40 to 9 that stuck with it, they were consistent, and that's what made her keep going, to see them, to pursue what God had placed in her life. So overall, from what you've learned in catechism, from the baptism, circumcision of the heart, from the baptism of the Holy Ghost, from the communion, and from the foot wash. Um, it blew her mind. She had never experienced anything like this. So her whole life changed. Her whole life changed. She has a whole different perspective than dealing with Christianity. It's not a religion, it is a relationship. Yes. So she's been blessed and she has received and I've seen some changes in her life. She, she kept studying her work, she writing things down, she highlighting things. So it tells me that she has learned so much from catechism. It affected her life. And um, when we go to the store or something or the supermarket, she will talk to individuals and then she will send them to me. So her thing is she talked about Jesus and she'll bring them to me and I will do the sinner's prayer, prayer of salvation. It was a teamwork. So she have learned so much from catechism. And again, Pastor Kay, from me to you as a pastor to a pastor, I thank you so much and I love you and I pray to God that you'll live a long life. Yes. Long life. So you can continue doing what you do. There's no one that does the job that you do. You're the best of best. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll leave you with this. I've asked you, and I've talked to you a few times. I've heard a lot of powerful preachers, Bible quoting scriptures, 
seminar preachers, but I heard a few powerful anointed preachers that separate from all the preachers. You can have all the head knowledge, but it's the anointing of God that's upon your life. And I thank you for that. And I love you, Pastor Kay. Thank you. See. Thank you. Eddie was telling me that on Holy Ghost night she was baptized with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in another tongue, the tongue of angels. And uh, she uh, spoke in tongues for the first time. And the Bible says, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto man, but unto God. And how be it in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. And when you speak in that heavenly language, he builds you up and strengthens you. And uh, his wife felt that. Another thing was worship night, and he told me that she lifted her hands, she clapped, she danced, she did all of those things uh, in that lecture, and it just released her because she wondered in her church why they did all those things. Why do you lift your hands? Why do you dance? Why do you clap? And then in that lesson, the clarity came of why we worship the Lord that way. And so it was a wonderful uh, thing. Uh, for his beloved wife to experience those truths of the word. And so I thank you. Uh, Eddie, tell your wife I appreciate her as well. Amen. Give him another hand. Yeah. At this time, we have a presentation to all of the students, and uh, we're going to present to them uh, baptismal certificates like you heard tonight, every one of them. Uh, went into the ordinance of water baptism uh, individually and uh, the water baptism we do is according to the scriptures and the example for water baptism is the Lord Jesus Christ and the Bible says that he went into the water and straightway out of the water he came out and the Father spoke and so in uh, our uh, baptism, water baptism we wait on God they go into the water like Jesus did, not sprinkled, but immersion, because that's how Jesus was baptized. And then when they came out, they buried the old nature. They came up in newness of life, like Sarah was saying. She said she just left everything in that water. And she's been a new creature in God and given her life in God and the service for God. And so what a wonderful experience water baptism is and every one of these nine students had a circumcised heart given to them. God cut away a stony heart, a heart that goes after the world and the things of the world. But when you receive a water baptism, he gives you a heart to love him and to serve him like never before. So at this time, uh, Sister Cheryl's going to come and she's going to read the names uh, of all of those that uh, received this ordinance of baptism, and we're going to hand out uh, their certificates at this time. Talopa Fono. Eric Hahn. Tina Han. 
Ernesto Lopez. Elena Fartui Kayono. <laughs> Edsel Patton. Sarah Garcia. At this time, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm emotional. That's terrible. I always hold myself together so well. All right, tonight we're going to honor those with uh, perfect attendance. We're going to call your name. You're going to come down. We're going to give you your, your certificate for perfect attendance. Nine months, never missed. Wow, that's a high honor. Amen? Sarah Garcia. Sarah Garcia. She, she got messed up, but she's coming. Here she is. She's so excited, boy. Perfect attendance, Sarah. It must have been a great class, huh? Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Eric Hahn. and I was always early, too. <laughs> Reno and Fredo. Reno and Fredo. Never miss. Now we have a certificate for high test scores. My Elena Fatui Ayono. Man, his wife's smart. That good. I think he's taught her everything she knows. <laughs> Tanopo Fono. <laughs> Reno Ufredo. Yes, the Lord helped him, huh? That's beautiful. Of course, it helps to have a wonderful wife like Michelle. Michelle, she helps study with him and everything. So, man, congratulations, Reno. That is awesome. 
We rejoice with you. That's good. Perfect attendance. Perfect attendance, high test scores. And now tonight, the most outstanding student, one that has perfect attendance, one that has high test scores, and the name is Reno. I'd like you to listen to the words of this song because it certainly is our spiritual walk with God. Amen? Uh, let's welcome them as they come to minister. giving it up for this class. Thank <laughs> you. 
Amen? A troubled sea. But one thing we know that God wants to get a hold of us. And I remember the day God, God got a hold of me. How about you? And that was the greatest day. But you see, once you get a hold of God and you start your journey with the Lord, there's other mountains. There's other valleys. There's other deserts. There's other streams of water that come. Trouble comes in all of our lives. Some people think that once you receive Christ, you're, tro you're trouble free. I want to know where they get that because I want to sign up for that. Right? But all those difficulties in life is to trust him and believe that his love is stronger than anything that we go through. Could you give them a hand? That is a powerful thing. Thank you so much. Well, it's my time to give a message to the class. And, of course, they've heard me for nine months bring, bring uh, the class uh, attention on topics that we discussed through the year. But every one of these students uh, have come to the class and they came with a hunger uh, to know the Lord more fully. When you came to this class, you thought, I don't know what I'm getting myself into, right? Uh, but when you came, you found God in a deeper way. And each lesson, it just got better and better, right? Did it? It did, didn't it? And so we know that God uh, brought you through and uh, you learned more about the Lord and uh, the experiences that they've experienced were absolutely life-changing and the truth the knowledge of God's word came alive to every one of them. God's done a deep spiritual work in their hearts and in their lives. And I want to say to the graduation class, it's only the beginning. There's just four things I want to say to you, class and students, this evening, is your journey with God needs to continue. In 2 Timothy 3.14, it says you must continue in the things that you've learned and the things that you are sure of. So I want to say to you, they're assured of many truths. And not only that, they've experienced them, but they've got to keep going on in their journey with God. The second thing I want to say is there's so much more for you than what you have experienced today. We learned in Hebrews 6 that we leave the principles or the foundations of God and we go on unto perfection. They learned in that class that there's a ladder. And that ladder is truth and revelation and knowledge of God's word. And they learned that they must walk up to the next step, to the next step, to the next step. And class, who's at the top of that ladder? Jesus, Jesus is his name. And when we get to the top of that ladder, then we become like him. You never will be Jesus, but you can become like him. And so that's why there's so much more for them. And they want to keep going on their journey with God. The third thing I want to say is that God has a plan and a purpose for your lives. Every one of these people were born with destiny and purpose. And when you started this class, you didn't really know what the purpose of God was over your life. But when you were water baptized, God spoke to you prophetically. Amen? And in that prophecy, God revealed to you, this is what I want to do with your life for my kingdom. And it's wonderful to know your destiny. Some people, they, they, they just think they're an accident looking for a place to happen. But there's destiny and purpose, church, over all of our lives. In Jeremiah 29, 11, the prophet of God speaks, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. God declares to us there's a plan for us. He says, my plan is to prosper you. Anybody here don't want to be prospered? Can I see the hands of those who want to prosper? God has plans to prosper you. It says, and not only that, but to give you a hope. And there's a hope in God and serving God. But he says, not only do I have a plan to bless you and to prosper you and give you hope, but he says, I want to declare to you I have a future for you. So the purpose and the plan of God is for us to embrace the future. <coughs> Amen? Yeah. That we have hope. We have a confidence. Listen, if God be for you, who can be against you? Amen. And the last thing I want to say to the class is that we got to continue to learn. you got to continue to grow. Catechism is a foundation class, a life-changing class. But that's not all there is. 
2 Peter 3.18 says you must grow in the knowledge of the Lord your Savior. We got to grow. We got to learn. You see, they just got a basic foundation. But as they go on in their journey with God and learn more about God and develop more to be the man and woman of God that God called them to, they've got to continue to learn. So I want to suggest to this class behind me that they need to go to Bible school. They need to go to the Bible college here. We have a university here that teaches the word of God. And I want to say to you, this Bible college is founded upon the word of God. It is a Bible college that is just absolutely life-changing. Just as much as this class was, they need to grow and develop more in the things of the Lord. And we thank uh, uh, Sister Janice Kirk, the dean of our college. Would you give her a hand? You want a good college class? See her tonight, and she'll tell you, you name it, we've got it. Because God wants us to know the truth, and the truth will set us free. You can't really be free to the truths of God's word until you learn them. So tonight, we're going to confirm this class. We're going to lay hands on them. The Bible says with the laying on of hands, there's an impartation. And we're going to lay hands on them and impart the Spirit of God. But when you confirm somebody, it means you lay hands on them to say, Lord, we establish them in your walk. And they need to be established in the walk so that nobody will uh, get them off course. And when we lay hands on them and confirm them in the faith, God's going to establish the word for nine months that they've been studying. But more than that, confirmation, laying on of hands is to strengthen them. How many know we need strength? Today as Christians, we need to stand tall. And we need the strength of God. Confirmation is to make them firm. And when I uh, read that, make them firm, it's like, how many have ever uh, seen somebody pour cement, huh, Randy? Lots of years, right? And they pour, they have forms, they pour that cement in it, and it is an amazing where there's signs on there that says, wet cement. What do people do? Step in it, touch it. Oh my, it is wet, gee, what a wonderful revelation. But you see, when we talk about being firm, I'm talking about being planted in cement that's unmovable, that's unshaken. And that's what we're believing tonight when we lay hands on them, that God will do for every one of them. Make them sure, make them settled. Amen? So at this time, we're going to have the, the students stand and we're going to go down and lay hands on them. And we're believing for God to do that to every one of them. That God will help them do the plan and purposes of God over their life. That they'll have a greater love and a greater respect for God and the things of God than ever before. So at this time, we're going to have the musicians play, the ministry, and leaders of, of uh, catechism. Our elders and leaders, we're going to lay hands on them and believe God to impart unto them a settling, an establishing, being fixed, helping them to fulfill their destiny, their goal that God has over their life. And most of all, have a greater love for God and a greater respect for the church. You see, you can't serve in this church without being catechized. Pastor Eddie's church is the same. You can't serve in his church unless they've been catechized. We have many churches bring their people here. Elders, deacons, pastors have gone through this class. That God would settle them, establish them in the teachings of God's word, that they would be unshakable like these students behind us. So we're going to go now.
As you're standing here tonight, just bow your heads and lift your hands to the Lord. And we're going to lay hands on you. And with the laying on of hands, there's an impartation of the power and strength of God to settle and strengthen you and to let you be a voice in this generation with the knowledge that's been imparted unto you. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we lay hands on these students. For with the laying on of hands, there's impartation. Let the power of the Holy Spirit come upon them. Lord, for nine months, they sat at the feet of Lord your son Jesus. They have heard about the life of Christ. They have heard about the sacraments, the teachings in your word. It's been a joy and a delight in their hearts. They've experienced the sacraments that have been life changing. But Father, more than that, we now settle them and strengthen them to be able to declare the truths of your word that they have experienced. And Lord God, we know that there's greater revelation and knowledge for them ahead as they take those steps. So now we lay hands on them and we bless them. We settle them. For it's not by chance that you stand here this day, says the Lord. But I brought you on your journey that you might know me more fully. And there was in your hearts a desire to know the deep truths of my word. And when you came into this class, your ears were open to hear truth that you never heard before. And when you heard that truth, it touched your heart. And it gave you a determination and a zeal to become more like me, says the Lord. So today I come to bless you. I come to touch you with my presence. And to let you know that I hold you in the palm of my hand and no one can pluck you out. For today is a day of blessing. Today is a day of strengthening in your walk and in your life. Be refreshed, be renewed, and be strengthened, says the Lord. Father, we thank you now for your word over their lives. They will be doers of the word of God. They're not just hearers, but they're going to implement it in their lives. We thank you for them now. We bless them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Give him a hand, shall we? Praise the Lord. At this time, we're going to present them with their diplomas of completion. They're going to come down and receive it. And on your program, we're, I think we're pretty much right on. Is that right? Okay, just checking out. A lot of you are looking at how long, much longer is this? There we go. Garcia.
Edsel Patton. Talopa Fono.
Praise the Lord, class of 2023 here. Just thank the Lord for that, their faithfulness. You know, they, I think we started the beginning of, I think, 20 or 30, and here we are with nine. They're faithful, faithful for nine months. Praise the Lord for that. So, we're going to dismiss with prayer, and um, after I'm done, please honor the 2020 three class, let them come down first, and there's going to be refreshments and cake and coffee upstairs. So, um, appreciate that. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for the things you do in our lives, and I ask you for a, a special blessing upon this class and every student here that graduated, Lord. It just give them a blessing, Lord, and let it continue on, Father, in the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Thank you. 